in the driver's seat. I'm your host, Barbara Terry. On today's show, it's race time as I rev up the engine at the Skip Barber Racing School in Lime Rock, Connecticut. Plus, I'll take you through the necessary steps in order to inspect and buy a used car. I'll review the 2005 Scion TC Sports Coupe, and we'll meet retired football great Jay Novacek from the Dallas Cowboys and our celebrity drive-by. All this and more coming up on In the Driver's Seat. Growing up in Texas with six older brothers, messing around with hay trucks, tractors, and jalopies my brothers used to drive, I developed a cool desire for horsepower. And now, after years of experience in the car business and a passion for anything with wheels, I now have the opportunity to share my expertise with you. Let's get revved up, kick the tires, hit the gas, and let me put you in the driver's seat. to put the pedal to the metal, I attended a training class to introduce me to the rules of racing. Uh, one thing for sure is you don't want to get overwhelmed by the fact you're driving a racing car. It's just a better car. The only two things you really have to remember with all the things we're going to talk about this morning are where the left side wheels are, because the car is wider on the left side than you're used to. And also, if you do happen to spin, which is totally possible, lock up is your friend. You race the four-cylinder cars on what other cars do you use? Uh, we all now are four-cylinder cars that we race. And, uh, in the series, the car is a hybrid of these cars. They have wings and slicks and a sequential five-speed gearbox. Safety was their main focus since top speeds with these cars reach upwards of 100 miles an hour. I depended on the instructor's expertise who showed me how to buckle up and keep out of harm's way. Once you get the lap belt tight, it should be low on your hips. You don't want it to come up on your abdomen or your rib cage or anything like that. I'm going to be on the track with some experienced and inexperienced drivers. Hmm, where's my car? skills to the test. Being the only woman in the race and a total adrenaline junkie, I wanted to give the men a little run for their money. The more laps I did, the more confident I became. Oh yeah! I must say though, race car driving is a very tricky sport. You must be very calculated and aggressive at the same time. It's time to make my move as I rev up this 140 horsepower motor in this get up and go extreme machine. I want to say special thanks to RB, aka Rocket Boy. Don't ask, you don't want to know. And Bruce, aka Sweet Lips, for letting us film here today at the Skip Barber Racing School right here in Lime Rock, Connecticut. Cool. Coming up next, let's go shopping for a used car. So stay tuned. Hello, I'm David. I'm Howard with the Bellamy Brothers, and you're watching. Hi, welcome back to our show. Obviously, the first thing you need to do when shopping for a used car is to decide on what type you want. Whether it be a domestic, an import, economy versus luxury, an SUV, or if you're from the South like yours truly, you're more than likely going to be shopping for a pickup truck. Shopping for a used car can sometimes be a difficult process, and if you're not confident in what you're doing, 
you could end up with what we call in the business a lemon. That could give you plenty of migraines and cost you lots of money in repairs. In this segment, I will show you a step-by-step -step process which will help make your car shopping experience a pleasant one. One of the first things I do is obviously check the tread on the tires. And not only that, I'll check all four to make sure the tires are worn even. Measure the tread of the tire. Seems fairly new. Check out the windshield wipers and all power options, including windows and sunroof. Glance at the overall exterior. Whoops, seems like a little fender bender. A few scuffs, but nothing major. Now let's pop the hood and check out the engine. Let's first start by checking the fluids. Your transmission fluid, your oil, your power steering fluid, your brake fluid. On this particular vehicle, I'm gonna check the transmission fluid first. When checking your transmission fluid, it should always have a good, rich red color to it. Also, smell the fluid. And if it smells burnt, I would totally stay away from the car, especially when you're feeling it, if it feels like it has metal flakes in it. This particular car is real smooth, smells good, and the color's good, so I would say the transmission has a long time left to it. Now let's take a look at the oil. You should always look for a rich, brown, thin consistency oil on the dipstick. I would totally warn you to stay away from a vehicle if the oil is real goopy or black colored because more than likely the person that you're buying the car from did not do regular scheduled maintenance on the car which could mean some serious motor issues that we're not aware of. You don't necessarily need a dipstick for your brake fluid because the component actually is see-through so just make sure it has a good level to it. Now on to the power steering fluid. By the way, always keep either a tissue or a napkin at your disposal in your car. Your power steering fluid, just like your transmission fluid, should have a good red, rich tone to its coloring. When checking your radiator level on a car that you're looking at, it's not necessary to have the car turned off for let's say an hour for the motor to cool off so when you unscrew the radiator cap you don't blow your head off with the pressure. Locate the overflow. In this particular car, this is the overflow right here and it's usually labeled. Pull the dipstick out, look down to see if you can see liquid in there, which obviously it's a little low on antifreeze right now because it's at the very bottom. But then again, you're looking for color. Antifreeze should always have a light green limey type color on it. And this one does. The battery in this particular car looks good. As you can see, the corrosion around the battery cables is non-existent. Um, I'm sure you guys have had cars in the past where there was a lot of corrosion around the end of the cables. And actually, if you do have that, there's a wire tool that you can use to scrape that corrosion away. Or, real quick fix to that, it's just a can of Coca-Cola. It's amazing if you pour that on there, it'll start bubbling up and actually eat the corrosion away. Always remember when purchasing that used vehicle that you're looking at, it will not be perfect. There will be issues and repairs needed. So I recommend having a little extra money set aside or even seeing a mechanic about it. Good luck with your purchase. Still to come on In the Driver's Seat, I'll give you my take on the 2005 Scion TC Sports Coupe, and we'll meet Dallas Cowboys great Jay Novacek. Here's the latest creation from Toyota's new sister line of vehicles, the 2005 Scion TC Coupe. This sporty coupe is powered by a 16-valve four-cylinder motor, and for those of you who are looking to save money on gas, it'll give you awesome gas mileage. 30 miles per gallon on the highway and 23 miles per gallon in the city. Here's what some Scion professionals had to say. The Scion TC was basically designed for a European look. You wanted to have a car that was basically aerodynamic, still good on speed and pickup, but at the same time won't break the bank. With TC being on the market a year from now, yeah. who do you see being its largest competitor? Other sporty coupes, the small Acura, the, uh, the A4 from Audi, the uh, Volkswagen Jetta. I was talking to a Toyota dealer, a friend of mine the other day, a real good friend of mine, and he was explaining to me that in the dealerships, actually, you can pretty much go and just design your car. 
Yeah, you can design it online, in fact. You can, there are only two major options from the factory, automatic transmission and the side curtain airbags. But there are over 40 accessories that can be put on by the dealer or at the uh, port. So you can go online, all the prices are there, there's no haggling, so you know what it'll cost. You can configure your whole car before you go into the uh, dealership and talk to a salesman. I've noticed that the TC on a lot of their standard features have a lot of uh, upgrades, let's say, that other manufacturers would consider an upgrade. Yeah, it's pretty much basically a turnkey operation. The standard car comes with the uh, power windows, power door locks, the uh, AM, FM, CD, and twin moon roofs. So this is the first two-door coupe? This is correct. The other two are four doors, and uh, this one's the sporty coupe. We think this is going to be the big seller. It'll probably account for half of Scion sales. Now, what kind of gas mileage are your cars getting? Okay, the X models are getting way up at over 30 miles per gallon. The, uh, the TC is in the mid-20s to 30 city and highway. And this is the new TC model here? This is it. Yeah, right. Even before the 2005 Scion TC rolled out into the showroom floor, it was a hit. I was curious to see how the public would react to this compact yet sporty machine. And after speaking with the folks in charge at Scion, well obviously they should be proud because the dealerships cannot even keep them in stock. I strongly encourage you to check out the TC and all the other Scion models. For more information regarding the TC, and other cars, stop by and visit us at our website, www.inthedriverseattv.com. Coming up in our celebrity drive-by, Dallas Cowboy great, Jane Ovacek. But first, here's today's In the Driver's Seat question. Before Nissan took its name in the 1980s, what was the company called? The answer, coming up. name in the 1980s, what was the company called? The Nissan used to be called the Datsun. We're here in Dallas, Texas, and I was fortunate enough to catch up with three-time Super Bowl champion and retired tight end for the Dallas Cowboys, Jay Novacek, right here on Celebrity Drive-By. Today we're at Tractor Supply Company in Burleson, Texas, and we're talking to my favorite retired tight end of the Dallas Cowboys, Jay Novacek. You're too kind. <laughs> we're actually going to take a uh, gander outside to look at your truck, but uh, a couple questions for you first. What was your first vehicle that you purchased and owned? A 1960 International Scout and head on their all-wheel drive. One four-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive. How many times did you take it off-road? It was pretty much, it, it lived off-road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure did. When did you buy that? Uh, sophomore in high school. And how many cars have you had since then? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I have a 79 Bronco, a, a 60 uh, um, Toyota Land Cruiser, FJ25. Nice and, car. Yep. And then I've had some uh, one-ton trucks also. Do you still have any of these cars? All but the Land Cruiser. And are they at your ranch? Yes, they are. We use them for our, our hunting operation. Mm -hmm. Are they all camouflage? Nope, just a couple of them. Yeah? yeah. Camouflage inside, outside, both? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah, both. That sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. I, I enjoy it and, and uh, you know, we use them all the time. Yes, he played for the Dallas Cowboys, but Jay really is a true cowboy. And having a passion for pickup trucks did not surprise me at all. There it is over on the left. What are you driving today? I got the GMC Sierra 3500. The green one. The green one. And why would you choose a Duramax diesel over, let's say, a Cummins or a Power Stroke? One of the things I've liked about them was the mileage, the consistency, especially the consistency of the mileage and the towing power and durability of them. Durability. They've really been a great truck. All right, crew cab, dually, one ton. Is there a fifth wheel in the bed? Hmm. Wow. We'll have to take a look at that. Wow. I'm judging. If I had to guess, I would say yes. And yes, there is. Jay, would you mind if we went for a ride in your truck? Absolutely. All right. When I'm not in his driver's seat, Jay listens to books on CDs. Being the ultimate hip cowboy, he likes all types of music. But his favorite driving song is Lunatic Fringe from Red Rider. Even his dog Roy knows how to turn up the heat in his truck. How many times do you uh, turn on the heated seats in Nebraska? 
<laughs> not very often, no. but one time we're driving down the road. And my dog Roy. You have a sitting, dog named Roy? Yeah. He is sitting over here and it's in the summertime. I'm going to a horse sale and he accidentally hit the heat on the seat. Uh huh. We're driving down the road, and I got this thing cranked up, and his tongue's just a hanging. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Finally, I figured out he was a little bit. You hot. he had turned on the heated seats. Yes. <laughs> so Jay, if you had one favorite feature of your truck, what would it be? I'm only gonna give you one. One is all. One. I would have to say the powertrain. Remember when the Duramax first came out? There, there was just this huge waiting list. Um, for them. I actually was I was brokering cars out of a GMC store at the time and uh, it was the huge thing that that everyone was waiting on. I like to be that that next wave so that if they have any of the bugs to work out then they usually get that done without me having to be the test pilot. He may be a real bad boy on the gridiron but how do his racing skills compare to mine on a lawnmower? And oh, did we have fun. He ate my dust and begged me for mercy. Thank you for letting me test drive your truck. You didn't even wreck it. I'm <laughs> proud of you. I do want to say special thanks to you Jay Novacek, retired tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Thanks a lot for being on our show. Thank you. You're watching In the Driver's Seat. We'll be right back after these messages. While in Texas, we had a chance to stop by the Kennedale Motor Speedway to experience some female-driven talent. From big girls to little girls, let's see what they had to say. Hi, we're talking to Marsha Wallace here at the Kennedale Motor Speedway. Hi, Marsha, how are you? Good, great. That's awesome that you hopped out of your car like that. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I've always been amazed of women, I guess, speed racers. Um, what basically inspired you to start racing? Probably my dad. Uh, I ran a couple of powder puffs a few years ago, and it was so much fun, I decided to get my own car. I used to watch as a child, my father would take us to the local dirt track, and then my brother owned a car, which he had another gentleman drive for him and I started getting really involved at that point um, and decided that I'd like to give it a try. It looks like a lot of fun. Sorry, what's a powder puff? That's when the, when the wives drive their husband's car for a race. Are you married? Oh yeah, my husband races too. Yeah? yeah. Does he work on your car when you're not on the track? Uh, yeah, I've got a whole slew of people that work on it. <laughs> How do you feel about racing in a male-dominated sport? Oh, it's fun. The guys, the guys are pretty good. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes they they give you they give you kind of a bunch of slack sometimes sometimes they kind of get out there with you and kind of bang on you a little bit uh, they just kind of treat you like one of the others I had you know some good times and some bad times more good than bad uh, in recent years since um, the gentlemen have kind of accepted me and learned to respect my driving style tonight we're at the Kennedale Speedway right here in Kennedale Texas and we're talking to Kayla Maxey an official race car driver hi Kayla Hi. How old were you when you first started driving? Six. Six years old. And you've been driving how long? Six years, going on my seventh. How long have you been racing? This is approximately my fourth year in the dirt car. Uh, I had three years go-kart experience prior to that. How does your husband feel about you racing? He loves it. He's behind me 100%. Um, he works real diligently on the car to give me a nice competitive car, and uh, he likes it. What exactly are you racing tonight? Like, are you going to be on the lap with five other cars? I know it's a circular track, but can you explain how that works? Uh, what you do is you go out in hot lap, and then they line you up for your heat race, and sometimes it's up to nine cars is what you do, and then you qualify to your heat race, and then there will be like a B main, which is kind of last chance qualifier to the A, and then you run your main, A main of the night, which that'll be 24 cars. How does that compare to like let's say NASCAR Formula One where you have to qualify to get your pole position? It's it's kind of the same except for you draw to see where you start in the heat. You're not doing by lap times and then uh, where you finish in your heat is where you start in the A. What was your first car that you started driving? A three horsepower go-kart. What are we driving tonight? Um, uh, 86 Mustang. How long have you had this car? 
since the mid-season of last year. Can you tell me a little bit about the car that you're racing here tonight? Yes, it's an IMCA modified. There's not much that's stock on it. Uh, it's not going to look anything like your average street car. It's real lightweight. Uh, we have fairly large engines, 350 Chevy small block, and they're really fast. They're the fastest class at the track, and it's highly competitive. Would that be like the same 350, like 5.7 motor you find in your Chevy Tahoes and Yukon Suburbans? It's an older version, yeah, but very similar. To my understanding, you're one of the only women that race out here, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What exactly are you racing tonight? Uh, this is an IMCA stock car. What kind of car is it? It's a Cutlass Supreme. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us tonight? Uh, it's just really fun. I wish more females got into it. Uh, they're seeing as how it's just mainly guys they kind of get you know dominated by it but I have fun the guys don't give me a problem I think more females need to get into the sport does your brother also race no he plays football thanks for watching in the driver's seat for more information about your vehicle hit the brakes and visit us at www.inthedriversseattv.com always remember buckle up drive safe and we'll see you next time.